Good day, friends. I want to start out by mentioning that this episode is sponsored by Autoimmune Resolution. The creator of Autoimmune Resolution is Katherine Hausch. She was a previous guest on the podcast, episode number 76. If you haven't listened to this one, I encourage you to go back and check it out. When it comes to your healing, have you already tried all the things? outside yourself, like nutrition, supplements, detoxes, and more. Maybe you're like many who feel like these things help to a certain point, but then you hit a plateau and you still end up having persistent fatigue, anxiety, digestive issues, and skin issues, and more. This is when it becomes even more vital to access your power within. Your symptoms are not a sign that you are irreparably broken. They are messages about the specific areas of your life that still need attention. When you learn to speak your body's language, you can break the cycle of fear and take back your life from chronic illness and autoimmune disease. You have the power to create a life you do not have to heal from. To learn more, visit autoimmuneresolution.com. Welcome to our Power is Within podcast. I'm your host, Chaz Smith, and my mission for this podcast is to inspire you to take your power back, to realize that you are the healer that you've been looking for all along, and that we are capable of healing in mind, body, and soul. Ah, yes. So, last week's challenge was all about grounding, otherwise known as earthing. I really hope that you guys were able to get outside with some bare feet and get those toes in the ground and feel the magic of connecting with Mother Earth herself. Um, Super excited to report that I managed to get outside every day this past week barefoot, even the day of the tropical storm named Nicole. Um, that was, that was, that was kind of funny. Um, (laughs) being outside barefoot is definitely a happy place for me. So yeah, I, if, if it's not something you are yet very comfortable or familiar with, I just, I can't emphasize enough how much I encourage you to have a willingness to explore if this could, um, be something that begins to resonate for you. All right. So speaking of all of that and the good challenges from last week, we do have a challenge this week. It is going to be in light of uh, this week's um, episode and one of the guests on the episode. So we're going to focus on incorporating a little bit more laughter in our life. Uh, So this week, maybe we could find some creative ways to do this. Let's see. We could just decide and choose to laugh for no reason. We could watch a laughter yoga video on YouTube and laugh along with it. We could turn on our favorite comedian or even like a comedy movie and just laugh out loud because what is a life worth living if we don't get to just experience that raw, real, deep joy and that just pure, raw, like just deep belly laughter, right? So whatever it is that you choose to do, And whatever feels like it will support you best for you to be able to add more laughter in your life, go ahead and do that and just have fun. Before I do introduce our guest for today's episode, I want to take one moment to send a special thank you out to all my continued monthly sponsors. I currently have Mary, Karen, Kathleen, Lisa, and Kristen. I really do appreciate your support. There is a link in the bottom of the show notes where you can sponsor this podcast for as little as 99 cents a month. So if you have found value in the content provided, check out the link below the show notes um, to support this podcast if you feel compelled or called to do so. All right. With that said, our guests today, both of them are back for round two, although this time they are together. So we have Bianca Spears. She is a guest from previous episode number 41 in our second season. And then we have Lindsay. Actually, it might have been the first season still. Hmm. Yeah. Perhaps it was. Yes. And then we have also Lindsay Mitchell. Lindsay is a guest all the way back to the very beginning, episode nine. So if you haven't listened to either of these episodes, those are definitely uh, two episodes that you can download and save into your library to check out when it is convenient for you. They're fantastic and they come together today with me to have a lovely chat about upgrading your brain retraining and also so much more. Many little things we discussed today. Um, have some of our own laughter breakout sessions in the middle of it all too. 
Lindsay and Bianca are going to actually share with us quite a bit about their individual backgrounds and then how they came together to create their own unique brain retraining elevating program. So let's go ahead and just dive into it. All right. Uh, today I get to introduce two beautiful ladies to the show. I have Lindsay and Bianca both with me today to have a fun conversation together as the three of us. Hi, ladies. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I know, and I, but everybody who's listening might not know that you guys have both been on the show before individually. Um, Lindsay, you've come on in the past to share your own personal healing journey and how rewiring really changed your life. And Bianca, you and I had a really fun chat all about laughter because you're a laughter instructor. And, um, and yeah, so we talked about the benefits of laughter and all kinds of fun laughter discussion. But uh, together, you guys have actually started collaborating and working on some partner projects um, and bringing some new things to the table in the healing community. So maybe we could start by allowing one or both of you to kind of share your story on how you even connected in this realm and came up with the ideas to move into these projects that you're delivering. Yeah, I just love the brain retraining community. We are, you know, we meet people like you, Chaz Smith, like, you know, I've, I met Bianca in a retreat that we were asked to speak at Rewire Your Wellness a few years ago. You know, you meet the most incredible people in this retraining community. And that's really what happened with us was we were both so passionate about helping people to feel better. Really, that is the underlying goal in, in both of our individual work. And we were both at this virtual retreat and we were speaking. And I think I did Saturday and Bianca, you did Sunday. And afterwards I messaged her and I was like, I think we have so much in common. We need to meet. We need to talk. And I think for the first couple of months, we were just talking and chatting and, you know, talking about our passion, especially, you know, me in the brain retraining, brain rewiring, having done this for a couple of years in vital side. And, you know, Bianca kind of having more exposure to the retraining community, working more with people with chronic illnesses um, in her own laughter practice. And so our passion kind of brought us together, but mostly we just were kind of laughing, joking, like just being ourselves around each other. And we just found that it was a great friendship and a great relationship. And we ended up turning it into you know, a business partnership. And so what we've done is Bianca's taken her expertise in laughter and working with people who have chronic illnesses, utilizing laughter as a resource. And I've taken my experience, you know, having worked in the medical world as a practitioner, having used brain retraining myself to recover from Lyme disease, and then my work in vital side, helping people rewire that chronic stress response. And we brought both of our expertise together to create our first program, which was Elevate Brain Retraining 2.0. And this was really to help people who have been introduced to other retraining programs, whether that be in vital side or another program. And then we wanted to help people personalize their practice, like feel really connected to it. I think a lot of times we can feel super stagnant, super stuck in our practice and feel like we're just running through the motion without really feeling that sense of connection or personality to our practices. And that is when we created Elevate to really be that sort of adjunct or that additional program to help people find joy, find light, find happiness in brain retraining. In Vital Side, you have a, your own brain retraining program. Yeah, that's right. So I offer Rewire, which is a brain retraining program um, 
for people with chronic symptoms dealing with the chronic stress response. And so that's kind of my baseline comprehensive program for people working on retraining, rewiring their brains. And so what I found was I was doing a lot of private sessions and I couldn't do all of these private sessions. Um, A lot of people wanted that personalization. And when I met Bianca, she was doing a lot of private sessions for people with chronic symptoms as well, who were also brain retraining. So what we decided to do, we were like, okay, let's put our heads together. (laughs) Let's create a course where we incorporate all the information we talk about in one-to-one sessions and make a course out of it to give people the ability to feel more connected, lightness, joy in their retraining practice, and then also to connect with themselves throughout the process. For anyone who's had a chronic illness, you know that you can easily lose sight of who you are and your own purpose, your own mission in life. And you can do the same thing in brain retraining. We're kind of doing a practice and maybe we're feeling a little bit better. We're seeing uh, benefits from it. But that connection to ourselves is a huge piece that we often found was missing. So yeah, you in vital side, you can start with rewire and then you can kind of take that next step into elevate brain retraining 2.0 um, to really personalize your practice and start to answer questions you have about the process, like increment, how do I incrementally train? What happens when I feel resistance? How do I laugh if laughing is super uncomfortable, right? All these questions that people have had, we have created this course around those questions and around what we do in private sessions. Okay. Um, Yeah, that makes sense. Um, So just to reiterate for anyone who's listening, Elevate 2.0 was not designed as a another brain retraining program. It literally is a supplement to or a complement to whatever brain retraining program someone is in. It does not need to be vital sides rewire. Yeah, that's right. And that's something that else that Lindsay and I noticed was that people in the brain retraining space, yes, they were losing connection to themselves, to to joy, to gratitude, to what their purpose might be in life or what their passions are. They were also jumping and and like program hopping from one to the other. So say like from DNRS to Gupta to Vital Side, they're trying to find something that's going to help them in the next level that they need but they're kind of jumping around all the programs that are on a similar um, a similar level in that introductory brain retraining space. So we wanted to create kind of a path forward for people, as well as like Lindsay said, there's just constantly the same themes, the same questions, the same roadblocks that people were coming into private sessions with and make it not only um, – something that they can have access to as long as they want, which you don't have with a, necessarily with a private session. It depends if you get a recording or whatever, but um, but be able to move through that in their own time and have it be that little bit more affordable for them as well to get all of those questions that we know come up for people answered because it is a block sometimes in the brain retraining space where people like... I really would love some help here and I really would love to coach with this person or that person, but it, I don't have it in my budget. Like that's not a doable thing. So they put it off and put it off and sometimes that keeps them stuck where they're at as well. Right. I was actually thinking about that as you were just describing everything. I thought, oh, this is great because this is literally – it's like, I mean, in a sense, yes, it's hard to totally replace the personal experience you get and just the connection you create when you're working with someone one-on-one. But a lot of times you're right. People just need a little extra support and they have these lingering questions. Like I know that was my thing when I was first doing brain retraining. It was just little things that would come up that I wanted some support or answers to. And so to be able to have that in a program that's a much more cost-effective Um, sounds wonderful. What I'm curious about is how this program is delivered. Is this a, at like a modules where you go at your own pace? Is this 
where you're a part of a group community, where there's a forum, where you can continuously ask questions and be supported along the way? Is um, is it like for like forever? Do you pay one price and you have access to it for as long as you want? Maybe you guys can speak to that. Yeah. So it's kind of all of the above with what you were talking about with the different modules, the community. So it's interesting with brain retraining. And I actually polled people on my Instagram audience today. And I said, in a brain retraining course, what is most important to you? And the top two, number one was a comprehensive guide. And number two was the ability to ask questions. And that actually resonates with me so much. Anytime I've been involved in an online course or, you know, I, you know, I've, I've taken a program or something like that. I love the ability to ask questions. I'm not necessarily someone who's like, oh, I want to be in all the group sessions and do all the things and, you know, be super vocal. That's, um, <laughs> I'm kind of the lurker. I'm like, hmm, what do we have going on here? What what is there to to be offered to me and and who can I ask when I have questions? Lindsay the Lurker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lindsay the Lurker. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, but, but that's kind of how I operate in a group. So anyway, so what Bianca and I found important was, okay, first to have that comprehensive guide, how it is kind of... Uh, how it's organized is within um, six modules or like six themes, there's different videos within those six modules. That's all about a particular topic. And how we have it outlined is if you want to complete it in a six week period, you absolutely can. We have a sample schedule of how to use the content. So we have break days, things like that. So it's not six weeks straight and use all this information. Um, but a lot of times people also like to take their time with it. So we typically recommend a minimum of six weeks and a maximum of three months. So that is to say that sometimes people take a little bit of, of a longer time to consume the information, but kind of having that information and committing time to it within a three-month period really prioritizes it. So it keeps you on schedule to use the tools because you're given quick little tools to use each day. And these modules, they're not hugely, like immensely time-consuming. They'll be a given amount of information, a little tool to add to your practice, to your day. And then you are also given a guidebook of how to use the information, what little um, plays for the day that you can use. So it is this process that people can use on their own time and we give you this kind of guide on how to use the information. And in addition to that, it's a monthly fee. So right now it's $99 a month, um, but that is October, 2022. Um, you know, that's where we're priced at today. And it's a module course, you know, that program, you get the private forum, you have access to ask either myself or Bianca questions privately on a private messaging system. And then you also get access to our group sessions and our core community calls. And that meets every three weeks. I think something else that's really cool about it is that um, I know Lindsay said the word information a lot of the time and that kind of popped out to me because I wouldn't really say I'm an information seeker, but something that was really important to us in creating this was helping brain retrainers to rediscover that passion and that play and, and to be able to personalize and make their practice their own. And I think that's something that can happen is people get so, oh, I got to do exactly this at exactly this time for exactly this long. Otherwise, I don't know what will happen, but it'll probably be bad. Um, and what we really wanted to do was help people to see just how flexible their healing journey can be and just how 
then their healing journey can be. But first taking it back to who are they at their core and like what are their beliefs? What are their values? You know, what is important to them in their life and how can that translate over into their brain retraining or their healing in general? Um, Because not everyone's going to like listening to audios. Not everyone's going to like doing laughter. Not everyone's going to like doing a solid hour of practice or have that chunk of time and that window in their schedule day to day and week to week so it is really about yeah there's content in there and yeah there's information but I think one of the biggest and best things is that it helps people to really rediscover who they are and I know we have one um, client Michaela who came through and I just I love every time she shares about her journey because she says how in love with herself she's falling and how she literally looked in the mirror one stage through the course and she looked physically different. She, she looked and recognized herself as a different person, not only on the inside, but on the outside. And I was like, whoa, like that is what we're going for here is I often call behind the scenes, I joke with Lindsay that Elevate <laughs> Brain Retraining 2.0 is the love child of personal development and brain retraining. Um, because I, I, we didn't really introduce ourselves properly at the start, but I come from a coaching background. So all of that belief work, that identity work and how you're showing up in the world and it's driving everything we do in our lives, everything, our beliefs and our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves and what we're capable of and what's possible in life. And so I just love integrating those pieces into the healing journey and seeing other people do that as well. And our clients come through and click into some really big change in identifying what they want, not only from their healing, but from their lives in the long term and, and in the whole, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it sounds like it. I have two follow up questions for you girls. So, based on just kind of listening to how you were describing that, Bianca, I was curious. When someone integrates Elevate Elevate 2.0 into their current repertoire of, um, you know, practices, maybe they're doing Gupta or um, DNRS, what what have you. Well, what all the programs out there have is kind of a dedicated um, or suggested amount of time that we should be spending on our daily practices to support our rewiring. And so does Elevate add to that um, where now they're going to potentially be spending even more time on their rewiring or is it really about giving them more flexibility and freedom within their current practice to be able to see that they don't have to follow it so rigidly in order to get the benefits? That's my first question. And then I'll just give you the second question as well so you can roll with it. I'm wondering at what point in someone's brain retraining practice, is it ideal for them to add Elevate? I don't know if it's like, oh, if you're six months in or if it's not really about the timing, but more about the feeling and the experience that they're having within the practice. Maybe you could speak to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, is Elevate adding to start off with? Is it adding to the time? Um, I think is what you were asking. So In the beginning, a lot of these programs say like dedicate six months or or however long it is to giving that hour a day, which as we all know, being through that. And I think last time I was on your podcast, Chesmith, I wasn't a brain retrainer and I hadn't gone through that process. Maybe. I can't remember. Correct. Yeah. 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 So now I have done brain retraining. I hit my own patch of burnout and stress and went through brain retraining actually just before we brought Elevate out. So the repetition is important and that consistency is important for the rewiring, but everyone comes into brain retraining at a different point with different symptoms they're looking at and different um, situations. And some people might brain retrain for three hours a day I've met people who actually say to me, like, I laugh with you for two hours a day. One one lady said to me, and I was like, whoa, that's some, <laughs> that's some stamina for one. And that's awesome that you've got, like, that you're incorporating that into your days and you were, like, so focused on creating that dose chemistry. 
not everyone's going to do that. Some people are going to check the box and do an hour. Some people are going to be unfocused during their practice. Like a, a prescriptive like, okay, six months, one hour a day, that's going to do it. Like is not going to cut it for everybody. And the longer you spend in this space, the more you realize that people with more chronic symptoms tend to take a little longer to like shift out of all of the symptoms that they first came in with. They might be a lot better after six months, but maybe not down, like maybe not completely where they want to be. So in coming into Elevate, it's up to you to then consider uh, what, what is going to suit you, what is going to be best for your lifestyle and where you're at. And I think that's a really important thing because in healing, people are so sometimes desperate to heal that they're willing to give over to some advice from someone, someone who knows something, whether it's a doctor, a specialist, a brain retraining coach, whatever, like they kind of want someone to tell them the answers. But the truth is in a, in a group co- course or, or whatever, it's not a doctor that's seeing you. It's not someone who knows exactly your lifestyle, exactly where you're at. So to say, you know, a certain amount of time or a certain amount per day needs to continue. Like even after that six month point, people go, okay, cool. I'm pretty good, but what do I do now? And I know I've went through ebbs and flows where I was like, I'm sweet. And then I kind of went, no, I'm not. I need to get back to brain retraining (laughs) and went through a massive ebb. So it's really up to people to find their own. The second thing is Elevate when you join. Yes, there will be like extra course content to move through. However, depending on how your brain retraining, whether you're prioritizing a strict practice of exact rounds of practice, um, well, one, you could start to insert some of the state changes that we've got in Elevate in um, into your brain retraining practice. Or two, like when you're doing your incidental training, when things crop up, can you then use one of the state changes or one of the even thought processes that we introduce in Elevate? Yes, because no matter what we're doing, we're always using and, and wiring our brain in a particular direction. So it's almost like you can't put brain retraining in a box and say, okay, checked the box. I did an hour this morning. I'm sweet. Don't need to retrain my brain anymore. Now I'll go whatever, think all the negative thoughts or, or, you know, look at stuff that doesn't add value to my life. Everything we listen to, everything we learn, everything we focus on affects literally ourselves. Like not only our healing journey, but our lives and our results and what we're creating and manifesting in, in all areas. So it's about that I think this is something Lindsay and I are passionate about as well is that brain retraining for life kind of attitude. It doesn't mean that you stay and elevate for life, but it means that you have that attitude where you're always going to be growing and learning and developing and delving into different layers of your healing and knowing how you can continually grow and move forward and and use this beautiful brain of yours that you've just started to learn about when you come into brain retraining and you're like, okay, cool. I got a little feel for this now. How can I take that to the next level? I'll throw to Lindsay for the next question about integrating. Yeah, that that was so well said, Bianca. And the word that comes to mind for me is empowerment. I think that was such a goal of ours was to allow people to feel empowered in their retraining practice. Uh, You know, as humans, we do appreciate structure and routine, and we need that in our lives. And so that's why we have that outlined in Elevate. But we also work through practices with people so that they feel empowered to make the choices that align with themselves. Uh, Again, throughout healing, we can feel so disempowered because a lot of times at first, prior to brain retraining, we, you know, kind of outsource all of our healing to other people. It's easy to do. I did it, you know, and it's, it's kind of what happens in modern Western medicine. 
But with brain retraining, the idea is we're taking it back into our own hands, but even going through a course, it can feel a little bit like, okay, I just have to follow the rules and I just have to do it in this way because that's how it's outlined. So yeah, what we do is really try to help you to feel empowered to make the decision that works for you and use the practice, you know, use your tools in a way that feels aligned with your own life. And, you know, to, to kind of think about, well, what, how, how do I kind of integrate, you know, elevate into retraining? What does that kind of look like? When does that happen? Uh, Usually what we find is, if you have dedicated at least a month to brain retraining, that means using your practices daily. Um, it doesn't have to be for an hour a day, but using a lot of the state changers, the tools daily for a month, and you've gotten to the place where you feel like you're in a really great uh, flow with retraining. You see the benefit of it. You're like, okay, I see the value in this. I feel, I see the value in the content. I'm using the tools, but now I have questions, right? How do I incrementally train with anxiety or brain fog or some of those more ambiguous symptoms that I experience? Or what do I do if I'm, you know, a real kinesthetic physical learner. How do I make this information work for me? Because visualization isn't my strong suit. So then these questions start to come up when you have context around the tools, you have a lot of information, you have um, that value, you found the value in the tools. And now you want that personalization piece. Like Bianca said, you want to play a little bit more Maybe your practice has gotten to this place where it feels kind of boring or it feels like an obligation. So we would say a minimum of a month of practicing. And then while you are practicing, whether it's a month, six months, three years of practicing, you're at that place where you kind of feel stuck or it kind of feels boring. You feel a little bit disconnected from it. That's that prime time to start Elevate. That's awesome. I really love that you guys are using the program um, to, as you said, help empower people. Because I mean, when I'm thinking back to my original brain retraining experience, there was definitely, I, I was definitely like getting to a place where it wasn't resistance. It was more this own internal understanding that I wanted to really individualize my practice to like be right for me. But then in the background was this other voice that is like, you know, comes from the perfectionism or the fear or the, the disempowered voice, because yeah, in my past I had been disempowered and gave my power away. And there was that voice that was like, no, you need to follow it exactly like it's written. And I know so many of us get stuck in that mindset, but there, like I said, there was the other voice in me that was like, no, no, I don't. And my rationale in the end was, okay, if there's multiple different programs out there and they are all unique and different, but yet people in all of them are having results, then who's to say I have to follow the rules perfectly? Why can't I make it like my own and really work for me? Why does that have to be me resisting versus me actually just tapping into my own inner authority and making an empowered choice that you know is um, best for me? So that really resonates for me. And I really love how you brought up, because I never even thought of this. You brought up how you help people with the more ambiguous like symptoms and how to um, exp you know, in incrementally train around those. And that is awesome because I, I had some of those weird symptoms and I never did like do any type of incremental training because I wasn't aware it was possible or that there were options or I didn't know how. Cause yeah, you're not taught. You're kind of taught how to, um, often do the exposure therapy for like really specific things. Like if you're having a specific symptom from like a specific food and you know what the exact trigger is that you can then train around. But for somebody who didn't know their triggers necessarily, 
um, to do that and to take that route, it was kind of like, I'm not really sure what to do now or how to like best support myself. So that's really awesome. Um, and I wanted to actually, I wanted to ask you a question, another question, but Lindsay, I think you had something you wanted to add on first. Yeah, I think, well, it's just, it's such a, a great point. And I think for those of you out there who are struggling to kind of figure out how to individualize the program and make it work for you, it may not be that there's a problem with the program itself. It just may be that it's that personalization piece that is missing. So giving yourself that permission, you know, like you eventually did, Chas Smith, to be like, oh, I can do things a little bit differently. I can make this work for me um, is so important. It's so key to take that personal responsibility, to have that empowerment in your retraining journey. And yeah, Bianca said, we're rebels that we that help rebels. And that's kind of what we do. That's kind of how, how we operate is we've always kind of found the value in, in tools, whether it's personal development in brain retraining, you know, these different modalities that Bianca and I are trained in, we find the value in that. And then we say, okay, how can we make this work for us? And so oftentimes the people that join Elevate, they are those out of the box thinkers. They are those people who just want a little bit more. They want something different or they're a lot of times practitioners themselves who are looking to put a different spin on retraining because this work is so important, not just while you're healing from chronic symptoms, but in life in general. And I think, you know, something that Bianca and I really strive to do is is simplify the material and give you really tangible tools to start using today, yes, to your practice, but then also start to use and integrate into your day-to-day life. Mm, I like that. So my question, earlier, Bianca was talking about, she mentioned how sometimes people program hop and they'll go from like program to program uh, rather than sticking with something and how what they're generally doing is they're kind of hopping and transitioning from one program to another that are all on the same playing field, like one brain retraining to another brain retraining to another brain retraining verse really immersing themselves into just one program, sticking with it, and then maybe getting to a place where, you know, like you guys are just talking about, like they want to up-level their brain retraining so they join Elevate. But say they do that and they get through like that three months and they're feeling really good. And now they're really wanting to take their healing to the next level and maybe peel back another layer of that onion. And then there are other programs out there that are tailored for people moving beyond the brain, like this brain retraining specific community. Um, So I'm not sure if either of you want to speak to any insights for anyone listening and how we can begin to tap into our own inner awareness and begin to discern what program might be right for them, whether that's choosing their brain retraining program versus knowing when it might be time to move beyond a typical brain retraining into some other type of program. I might start on this one and then throw to Lindsay because I know she might have something to say about uh, trauma processing and where that might come into the picture of healing. Um, So something I want to go back to is that, is that empowerment piece as well. And like you said, Chaz Smith, like trusting your own inner wisdom and, I think that's just important in life in general. Again, coming from a coaching background, I was working with entrepreneurs and people who were out creating businesses from their passions. And I think like the very first personal development thing I ever did was intuitive training and really listening into that inner voice and then being able to kind of cross over to other people and kind of read them intuitively and have them read you as well. And so that's always been really foundational for me is like that information is always there about what is right for you. 
and it comes to people in different ways. It might come in a physical uh, like symbol that they see. It might be a sensation in their body. And I think um, through the brain retraining or even just healing process, if you're dealing with physical things and physical symptoms, you can lose a lot of trust for your body and then perhaps trust for the signals that are coming to you from your gut or your intuition or whatever you want to call it. And and that is something that just breaks my heart when I meet people who are in that space. And I totally understand why. I completely get it because their body is doing stuff that they don't feel like they even have control of. And that brings up a lot of fear and confusion and, and frustration. So I think just returning to that place is such an important thing and something that I'm really passionate about. Something that I wouldn't say we go deeply, deeply into on a, like a somatic level in Elevate, but we do touch a bit more into somatic stuff in, in another offering that we have, Regulation Station. But yeah, I just think it's so key to be able to assess where you're at and, and not jump into other things too soon either. Like, yeah, it's good. And if you're feeling steady in one spot, then to move on to the next thing. Um, and, and yeah, I, I just, I get so excited about growth in general and just personal growth. And I love seeing um, people from the healing space really get into that. Personally, also because brain retrainers are so committed. They're like, you know, I worked with entrepreneurs and I worked with other people and like, yeah, they might do something or they might not. Brain retrainers are so diligent and dedicated in generally speaking because they have stuck to that practice that they just amaze me and I just always am lit up when I see the possibilities that await them, especially if they reconnect to that truth of who they are. Like the world is your oyster beyond your healing journey. Yeah, I always think how, I don't know, there's a lot of times I'm like, man, there needs to be a brain retraining program that caters to and markets itself to like not the chronic illness community, but more the community of just growth mindsets, people who really are at a place in their life where they want to really elevate and take their life to the next level and manifest new things because there's so much potential and power for manifestation within the um, within these like systems totally, and within the use of these tools that goes so far beyond just like eliminating physical symptoms. But what I was going to ask you, because you just kind of brought up like somatic experiences with, um, your other program that you briefly mentioned at the beginning, uh, the regulation station regulation station. Thank you. Now, would this be something that somebody would join like as their next thing on the journey? Um, or is it something that you can come in and do before you even brain retrain? Like where does that fall into the, um, into the kind of healing path? (laughs) Well, I am totally on board with you because I see the manifestation powers in brain retraining. And that is something that we touch into in Elevate for sure, because when I brain retrained, I was like, this is like personal development on steroids. Like this is like the secret scientific magical key to everything that everyone in personal development is looking for. And it's right here. And I think brain retrainers don't realize that because they're focused on their physical symptoms. Um, So I get really excited about that. Regulation station is <laughs> Lindsay's in the chat laughing at me <laughs> or laughing with me, I should say. Um, she loves my excitement, I think. Um, and now I've lost my train of thought with regulation station. So it's kind of funny. We firstly created it to come in after elevate as a path for people to continue forward and keep regulating their nervous system and sort of as like a like the final piece again with that like retraining for life kind of mentality and attitude it's like we're always going to have stuff that crops up where we need to regulate our nervous system we might like to start our day with nervous system regulation so we know we're in a good space so we have morning afternoon evening um state changes we have 10 in each category that are less than seven minutes so they're very quick very like you can retrain regulate in the moment and then we have some bonus ones and and some live calls as well so it's a debate that Lindsay not a debate but a discussion that Lindsay and I have had so much because I see it being for everyone because everyone needs brain retraining 
uh, sorry, like nervous system regulation, especially with what we've just been through in the last couple of years. Like it's pretty apparent that crap crops up in our lives and we need to know how to deal with that internally and not carry that then as trauma, but actually shift through that. So, and Lindsay's on the same page as well. She's like, yeah, it could go to everyone for sure. We created it for brain retrainers, but it could really be for for new moms. It could be for a stressed out office worker. It really could be for anyone. And so to put it in the like, if there is a path and a journey forward for brain retrainers and a direction, it's it can be used either on the side of a general brain retraining process so that you again have that like 35 extra state changes to incorporate into your practice. It could be used alongside Elevate or a similar program. It could be used after so that you're just going out and you're like, okay, cool. I'm good. I've done my brain retraining. And then as things crop up, I just want these extra tools and that community that's on that level and in that space um, so that I feel connected with people who get it. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that, you know, I just got off a call before this interview today or, or this podcast and I was working with a private client who was in rewire and he was kind of going through a lot of stuff right now, had a, a lot of recent uh, traumatic events happen. And he said, I need to kind of scale back brain retraining. What do I do? And I sent him the link to Regulation Station because Regulation Station, it has these quick state changers. All are seven minutes or less. Some are just two minutes or three minutes. And you don't have to think about doing them. You can just open the app on your phone, go to morning if it's morning, go to afternoon, you know, go to evening. And just use the tool in the moment. You don't have to think about anything or recall an experience. So for him, this is going to be incredibly helpful um, as he gets back into connecting with safety in his life rather than just kind of diving headfirst into a practice, making sure your practice looks a certain way, having to recall, you know, certain experiences, certain steps in the moment can be really difficult. So Regulation Station, it's this wonderful kind of database of all of these tools that we've curated for people who are dealing with chronic stress. And so Chaz Smith, what we'll make sure to do is, um, give you a link for your listeners today to access Regulation Station for a week free, just to kind of try it out and, and tap into those state changers. They're something that we kind of change out monthly. We always have new state changers that we're adding. So we'd love to have that as an offering today so that listeners can kind of tune in and experience it for themselves. That's awesome. So Regulation Station is actually like a an a, like an app that you can download on your phone and then just pay like the monthly service fee for? Yes. Yeah, so all of Vital Side content is on an app. So you can actually access, like if you're doing Rewire, Elevate, Regulation Station, you can access all of it through an app, which is really cool. Um, you can access your coursework and then also your private cohort as well. And we have private cohorts or forums for all of the different courses that you enroll in so that you can chat with people who, um, you know, are doing the course alongside you. Oh, that's awesome. Convenient for sure. So Lindsay, um, Bianca mentioned earlier that you might speak on behalf of like when trauma processing and healing might fit into our healing journey as we continue to peel back glares. And then you just kind of mentioned this guy had gone through some traumatic experiences. What are your thoughts on where that plays a role or does fit in? Because I know that I've talked to so many people who say that in their journey, what happens as they're rewiring that over time through rewiring old traumas and wounds and old um, intense emotional energy does rise to the surface. And a lot of times people don't really know what to do with that or how to approach it. So I'd love if you could speak on that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And how I I think about healing is kind of in these three bubbles. Um, One is addressing the physical body, which a lot of us have done. Uh, That's, you know, food, exercise, you know, all the very physical, tangible things. One is nervous system regulation. So addressing the nervous system, tapping into uh, what it looks like to connect with our own sense of safety, our own resilience that exists within all of us, but a lot of us who have had chronic symptoms have been so disconnected with that for some time. So in Rewire Elevate Regulation Station, our goal is to model what that safety, what that joy, what that peace can look like and communicate that signal from our brains to our bodies and back from our bodies to our brains. And then the third bubble is trauma processing. And what I always say is like, we can get into a really good pattern, a really good routine and, you know, addressing our physical body, taking care of ourselves, regulating our nervous systems. We're like in this good flow. And then trauma is constantly happening around us all the time, right? That's part of life. And, Trauma processing is kind of this lifelong process of learning what works, how to process, you know, um, past traumas or current traumas, acute traumas. And now addressing physical body, nervous system and trauma processing all have that common thread of this process of healing and they all interact with one another. But what Bianca had mentioned of like why I might like to speak on this is because I'm pretty passionate about this. I I did a live on it a couple months ago um, about when to process trauma and what that looks like. Because what I've found after doing this for five years is a lot of times, like you said, Chasmith, those wounds come up And then that person says, okay, it's time to process this. I'm going to go talk to a therapist. You know, I'm going to really get into the nitty gritty of trauma or they take a trauma based course or, you know, they do a trauma processing modality. And before I talk about that is I'm, I'll say I'm such a fan of it myself. It took me four years post brain retraining to do it myself. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of preface what I'm about to say with super fan over here. I love it and I have such a respect for it, but for me personally, it took a long time to be able to go there after experiencing, you know, big T heavy trauma as a child myself. Um, and every single person is very different, but what I have seen in these last five years of using, of working in this realm of brain retraining is that people can easily go into trauma processing and start it too soon. Now, that happens because we're retraining our limbic brains that we can connect with safety, that we have that capacity. And when we do that, like Bianca said earlier, that impacts our cells, that impacts our physical body, how we feel, how we repair ourselves, our mood, right? There's so many benefits of this. If we're going into a trauma processing modality and we're reliving or recanting that trauma, and maybe going through a tool like EMDR, or brain spotting to really pro- reprocess it in real time, um, that could be great for that moment in time. But after that hour session ends, what happens is if we haven't tapped into calming the limbic brain's response, regulating our autonomic nervous system, our bodies can physiologically still be responding like that trauma is present, especially if we don't have the tools. So that's a good time where maybe, you know, then that person can use one of their retraining tools, use, you know, something like rewire, elevate in order to kind of rewire that response after experiencing this trauma. But I've just seen it time and time again where brain retrainers do it too soon and then they feed into that negative feedback loop of this stress response and symptoms start to resurface. 
Now, if this happens, it's not detrimental. It doesn't mean that you can't retrain your brain and go back to it. But it may be, everyone is different, but it may be an indicator to press pause, have a little bit of awareness. Is this something that I want to do now? Can I revisit this in three months and come back to this trauma processing? Personally, uh, I tried to kind of process trauma while I was retraining and I was experiencing those very physical symptoms of Lyme and I felt just incapable of doing it. It really exacerbated a lot of my symptoms. So what I did was, okay, I sought that physical evidence for change so I could feel confident and capable in my day-to-day life. I modeled to my autonomic nervous system what it felt like to experience safety and peace and joy in my day-to-day life and also have that physical evidence of going to a yoga class. The first yoga class I went to, I just tears of joy streaming down my face, right? Uh, you know, traveling again, starting working, all of these things. And like Bianca kind of mentioned, then I had connected to this kind of natural progression. My intuition made itself apparent and I got this notion, okay, now it's time. (laughs) Let's dive head first. And that's when I personally started EMDR. Um, I also did some brain spotting just to try it out. Uh, and and I I love these different modalities. But if I didn't have that physical capability, that capacity, I definitely would have spiraled into back into that negative feedback loop of the stress response, and felt like I was at a standstill with my healing journey because those symptoms can easily resurface. That makes so much sense. And it's such a really good explanation. So thank you so much. Yeah, I think that, I think this is why it, it makes me feel sad for people when perhaps they're not feeling well and they're going through a lot of physical symptoms and they might not have found tools like brain retraining or nervous system regulation and they instantly think it's trauma and they think they need to hire like a trauma specialist, you know, or coach right away. And they do this really deep work and they don't get better. They get worse because it's like really hard to bring some of this stuff to the surface and re like, I can't even say reactivate your self because you're probably already in an activated state. So you're just adding like icing on the cake, you know, it's, it's how do you, how do you heal when you're just constantly putting more and more and more on yourself? But yeah, I definitely think there is an importance in the progression or the order that we approach um, different tools for sure. Bianca, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, slightly off topic, but something I guess I thought about as Lindsay was sharing her journey and, you know, taking that time. She obviously started Vital Side in that time. And something that a lot of really passionate brain retrainers do is become a brain retraining coach, right? And starting your own business is no joke. And that can be really triggering as well. And I think it's important to have something other than just the base level brain retraining program to support you through that journey as well. Because again, I worked with entrepreneurs. I know that even in a, I think dysregulation reigns supreme in in the entrepreneurial uh, space for sure. Um, And I think it then can, can lead to a, you know, they're feeling good. They want to help others. and, And I would just, yeah, urge people to make sure they're fully supported in their journey. If they do want to do that. I mean, coaching's a beautiful journey. Um, but I've noticed in, in speaking to other coaches in the space that that can happen. Lindsay, did you, how did you find it? I've never really asked you building vital side. Oh my goodness. Well, it's funny because you know that we tend to attract practitioners, you know, in vital side and, and elevate and, and rewire. And it may be because, you know, Bianca, you and I are practitioners, ourselves that have gone through the process or, or something. Um, but for me, 
it was really hard. <laughs> and for a lot of people, it's really hard. And uh, Chas Smith, you probably can attest to this as well. And so what I ended up like I kind of fell into it. I always say like vital side was like an entity that and I'm just the facilitator. It's always kind of been there and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm here to kind of help it move along, but I felt like I was ready to get back to work and I wanted to go back to work in in internal medicine and kind of started doing a little bit of that um with a integrated practitioner here in Austin and I quickly realized that I couldn't practice in the same way. So when I started um, to kind of try to figure out what I wanted to do, um, it was kind of this conversation that casually came up of, well, you want to bring this information into the medical space. Why don't you do that? Why don't you use the tools that you've learned? And at that point, I had already studied um, neuro-linguistic programming and some other modalities. So I was like, yeah, I, I think that's what I'll do. And it was really difficult at first to create boundaries because the first thing I did was just started privately coaching a lot of people who were in the retraining space from different programs um, who wanted a different take on things, who wanted someone else's perspective, um, who weren't involved in that program. So that was actually what I initially started doing was coaching people in other programs. And I loved it, but I felt so energetically drained at the end. So what I really had to do was create some boundaries. And I realized, I was like, okay, I'm like, 85%, you know, I, I feel like I'm 85% capacity at my most optimal self. I'm going to take on a handful of clients and work up to kind of incrementally training really with working. And so that's what I started to do. And it was this natural progression of, it was almost like overnight and you all probably have had this experience where it's almost like overnight you start operating in your life and you're just doing things without thinking about it and you're like gardening and going to social events and taking on more clients and growing things and um, that's kind of what happened but I remember the first six months of starting this I did have to be super cognizant of my time, my space, and my own boundaries um, before it was really this overnight shift of reconnecting with my full capacity. Yeah, I was talking to somebody else about that today is just how sometimes when we're retraining and we're feeling really good, that's great until like life happens or we start really stepping into these more challenging situations or more physically or mentally or emotionally demanding life situations and it can throw us a curveball like oh oh hello okay actually i need to i need to work with this yeah yeah totally i well and and to speak to that point too working with a lot of practitioners i have so many people who say I know that this is something that I want to do. I want to coach on. I want to, you know, really help people who have gone through something similar to me. And I'm like, that's amazing. Keep that inspiration, but don't dive in now. You can hone in, curate, harness that inspiration and know that this is something you want to work up to, but put that spotlight on yourself, breathe into that bag of oxygen, <laughs> you know, do all of the things now so you can show up as your most robust, vital self. And that's going to take time, y'all. That doesn't happen, you know, just because you know this is something you want to do. I remember in my sickest of days, I was like, I definitely want to do something with this. And I could hardly move. Um, it's that inspiration that we hold on to, that motivation to make a massive change in the world. If we know that we want to do that, we don't have to rush the process. We can create those boundaries and really focus on ourselves first. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. <laughs> I love focusing on me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, is there anything that you are passionate about sharing with the world or speaking on behalf of regarding everything we've talked about today and beyond that I have not asked you or given you an opportunity to speak on behalf of yet? Uh, I think we were pretty thorough today, Chas Smith. I I appreciate it. Uh, I will say one thing, you know, y'all did a little bit of foreshadowing with a brain retraining for just anyone, a brain retraining program for for anyone who um, may be dealing with just stressors of daily life. It may be something to look into in Vital Sight in 2023. Um, something around the corner. <laughs> yay, yay. That's awesome. We will look forward to that. I would love to see something like that available for people outside of the chronic pain and illness community for sure. Um, one final question that I might not have gotten to ask either of you in our first interviews, but I do ask everyone now, is if you could only choose to share one message with the world for the rest of your life, what message would you choose to share? I get my clarity when I paddleboard. <laughs> I was paddleboarding yesterday and I absolutely try to just create this full nothing experience where I'm not thinking about anything. I'm like paddling. I'm in the moment. That's, that's where I, you know, get my most clarity. And what I would have to say is it's all for you. This life is, it's all for you, you know, and healing is all for you. Joy is all for you. And Yes, we can help other people throughout that process, but this life, this human experience, it's all for you. So take advantage of the things that make you feel good, that help you. I can guarantee that is going to help so many other people in your life, around you, anyone that meets you, and make that huge impact in the world. I love that. Thank you so much. And I also resonate with the paddle boarding situation. Love it. <laughs> my favorite, like just thing to do with myself to just be present and find that inner stillness. Mm. Bianca, what about you? Oh, I love that. What Lindsay shared. Um, yeah, I guess I'm kind of defaulting back to something. I think maybe just maybe you did ask me this last time, but um, something that I have kind of preached and probably preached way more in the past um, when I first started in my coaching business was you are creating everything and you can create anything. Mm. So we know this as brain retrainers on an internal level, but I know Chasmith and I have been like on about manifestation today. Maybe that's another conversation for another time. But um, really, like you can create anything in your life. You can go through the healing journey. You can create the income, the lifestyle, the relationships, the mood, the whatever you want in your life. And I think, again, back to that empowerment, that's something that excites me for people to get, like just get on an embodied level and be like, yeah, I can create anything and really just run through life with that. Yay. I love that. It's so true. Ladies, it's been such a wonderful time chatting with you both. I'm glad to have you both back here for round two and together. That makes it even more fun. It's very exciting to hear what you guys are doing in the world. And I look forward to continuing to see what is to come, especially um, with this new concept and idea of a more expansive brain retraining for 2023. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having us back. It's been awesome. Thank you. Alrighty, that is a wrap. My goal for every episode, honestly, you guys, is to bring you some sense of hope, inspiration, or insight that will support you on your healing journey. Please share this podcast with a friend or on your social media and tag me at Our Power Is Within. As a reminder, I absolutely love hearing from you all. I love getting to connect with and interact with you all who are listening. So please message me anytime that you have feedback. You can 
message me and just tell me what you love. You could tell me what maybe something you wish um, you could hear on the show or a guest you want on the show or a topic you want to learn about. You can message me and tell me about how the weekly challenges are going for you or share with me what your favorite challenge so far has been. So lots of ways to connect. Um, You can DM me. You can email me. um, Plenty of ways to find me. Um, And yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. With that said, please do remember to laugh this week because you're worth it. And until next time, make this week great.